Going back to WWDC 19, Apple announced HomeKit would get a feature that promises to improve security on its smart home platform via Wi-Fi routers. This feature called HomeKit Secure Router works by applying firewall rules to HomeKit accessories connected via Wi-Fi or Ethernet ports. During the announcement, Apple said several router brands would roll out support. This included Linksys and Aero. I've been using a Velo mesh setup in my home since about December 2020, and I did a review on that, which is coming above now, and recently switched to the Aero Pro 6. So if you want to learn more about how to secure your HomeKit setup, make your smart home more secure, then continue to watch this video where I'll take you all, all the details about HomeKit Secure Router, how to set it up, all the settings that are best used, and also some of the things you might have to consider. So let's start with what is HomeKit Secure Router? Well, HomeKit support for routers enables you to set three levels of privacy controls for your HomeKit devices connected via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. These settings will be available within the app on iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. These settings allow you to determine how your HomeKit devices talk to the outside world. So smart home accessories that connect to the internet can be vulnerable to attack. Whilst it is very low, they're still vulnerable. But not only that, some device manufacturers have been found to be sending your data without your consent. So with HomeKit Secure Router, you can lock down devices from manufacturers that you might not trust. So in order to get started with HomeKit Secure Router, you first of all need an iPhone, iPad or Mac that's running the latest software. You also need to check you set up the OMAC app on your device and logged in with the Apple ID used with iCloud. You also need a home hub that's running the latest software. This can be a Apple TV, HomePod or the HomePod mini. And finally, you need a compatible router such as the VLOP mesh Wi-Fi or the Eero range. You can find links in the description below to all of these routers, but just for full disclosure, this channel may earn a commission if you click on those links and choose to buy. Before we continue, just a quick intro to what this channel is all about. This channel is dedicated to everything HomeKit. We cover news, reviews, and tutorials. So if you're liking what you see in this video, then check out the rest of the channel where we've got videos all about HomeKit and Apple's smart home platform. And if you do like what you see, then it'd be greatly appreciated if you hit the subscribe button. And also check us out on our social media channels at Follow HomeKit on both Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Now let's move on on how to set up. So I've assumed you've already set up your chosen router, and the next step is to add the routers to HomeKit. In my case, I'm using the Eero 6 Pro, and setup starts within the app by tapping the Discovery tab, then scroll to the option called Apple HomeKit. This will take you to a screen that will give you more information about HomeKit security, and a button that says set up HomeKit. You will then be prompted to allow access to your HomeKit data, which is important for it all to work correctly. The next part of the setup is like adding any other accessory to your setup. This process will take you through adding each router, which involves naming the router and adding it to your room you've placed it in. When first setting up each device, it uses a naming convention you first set up within the manufacturer's app. But there's a button in the setup UI to identify the correct router, which flashes the light on top. And this is really useful if you forgot the name you set it up with. Now, the final step, you'll be asked to turn on HomeKit accessory security. Once you have done these steps, it will enable HomeKit Secure Router. The default setting is automatic, and now I'll explain what all these settings mean. As I've already said, once it's all set up, it's pretty much automatic and you don't have to do anything else. You will see nothing different in the main sections of the OMAP. You will not see the routers listed in the rooms you've assigned them to, which is the same with HomeKit Bridges. To access these settings, you need to jump and tap the three dots right next to the plus symbol. Then tap Home Settings. This opens up the settings and options for your HomeKit home. And towards the bottom, you'll find a menu for Wi-Fi networks and routers. Tapping on the menu lists several options. First, you get to see all the routers you've added. If you've added multiple routers to your setup, then each will be displayed separately. Then tapping on one of the routers will list data like the room assigned, information about the router. You also get a toggle to enable and disable HomeKit accessory security. This is essentially the master switch to turn the feature on and off. Then finally, a list of all the HomeKit accessories that connect to your network either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. As previously mentioned, when you first enable HomeKit's secure router support, it is set to automatic, but you can set individual 
settings for each HomeKit accessory connected to your setup. Now let's have a look at those and what they all mean. The first one is Restrictor Home. This provides the tightest control over devices. These settings deny access to the web or other devices on your network. Devices set to Restrictor Home can still connect to your HomeKit hub on your local network, but because they cannot communicate to the outside the world, they won't be able to do things like update the firmware. It also means that features like the manufacturer's app that require cloud processing will not work. And I'll talk more on that later. Then you've got automatic, which is the default setting for any accessory connected. This setting allows internet connections and connections to other devices that the device manufacturer has identified. It describes these connections in the OMAP, providing additional transparency about which services will uh, the device connect to. However, I want to point out that not all device makers provide this information. And I've only seen uh, the Philips Hue Hub show this information so far. Then you've got no restriction, which allows any connection to the internet or local device. And this essentially opens it back up in exactly the same way as if it wasn't set up before. In most cases, the automatic setting will work fine and provide enough protection. But if you're worried about smart home devices transmitting data outside of your home, then you're best setting the device to restrict a home. This will fully lock it down and enable it only to work with HomeKit. Now let's look at things to consider when you using HomeKit Secure Router. So HomeKit Bridges. If you're using a HomeKit accessories that are connected via a HomeKit Bridge, such as the Philips Hue, then you do not need to go through each device to set individual settings, which would be time consuming. If like me, you have 35 lights and accessories connected to Bridges, then it's simply locked down at the bridge itself. However, this could be an issue with brands, say like Eufy, that have a central hub for its cameras. So if you want to restrict that device to home for one particular camera, then this would not be possible and it would restrict all cameras. So just bear that in mind when planning and deployment of this particular setup. Another thing to consider, if you choose to restrict to home, then this will stop the device from talking to the outside world. This means if you use features that require server-side processing available only via the manufacturer's app, then these features will stop working. So it is a trade-off between keeping your data private and functionality, and only you can decide which is the best one for you. In terms of HomeKit Secure Video, this is not impacted by any of the three settings. So if you was to assign the restrictor home setting to a camera, with HomeKit Secure Video support, then this camera would still work in HomeKit and HomeKit Secure Video. But in most cases, it would not work in the manufacturer's app. However, with cameras like the EVE Outdoor Camera that is designed to only work locally, then you would not be impacted. So what about non-HomeKit devices? Well, all the devices on your network, such as your iPhone and iPad and devices like that will still function the same way as before. This feature only impacts HomeKit enabled devices connected via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So what about firmware updates? Well, firmware updates are still available for your smart home accessories, just like they were before adding HomeKit Secure Router. However, there is a caveat to this. Setting the device to restrict a home may prevent firmware updates. So from time to time, it may be advisable to open it up if there's a firmware update available, if you have locked that particular device down, to update the firmware and then relock it down again. So what about Bluetooth and thread devices? Well, at the moment, the current implementation of HomeKit router support only includes HomeKit accessories connected via the Wi-Fi or Ethernet of the router itself. I have a number of thread and Bluetooth HomeKit accessories on my home that are connected via HomeKit hubs such as the HomePod. However, Apple does not include these types of devices in the current implementation. So what about Matter devices? Well. Uh, Matter devices will only be locked down if you choose to do it through restrict to home. If you restrict to home a device that you say you're going to be used with Alexa or Google, then this could be impacted. So you also have to bear that in mind when you're setting up any device within HomeKit uh, Secure Router to make sure that any settings that you apply do not impact any of the other ecosystems. So some final thoughts. Having spent a couple of years using the VLOP mesh Wi-Fi system, and more recently, the Eero setup, I felt more confident when adding devices to my home that I would not 100% trust with my data. Not only that, both routers have been rock solid in terms of performance, and in fact, the dreaded no response has been eliminated entirely. I also like the fact the average user 
it is simple to set up and leaving it in automatic mode will provide a decent level of protection. But if you do have concerns over a particular device phone in home or that needs cloud processing and you don't want it to do that, then only with a few clicks you can limit access outside of your network. This will bring added peace of mind for those concerned with devices that come from manufacturers with no track record of privacy. With more users adopting smart home devices, then adding a layer of security is a good thing. So I would personally recommend if you are a HomeKit user that you seriously consider a HomeKit secure router in your setup. If you want to purchase a HomeKit secure router, you can check out the deals on Amazon for the VLOP mesh and the Aero models. These are available via the links in the description below. And again, for full transparency, if you choose to click on these links, we may earn a commission via Amazon for doing that, which helps this channel out and we greatly appreciate that. So guys, that's the end of the video and hopefully you found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. And if you like what you see, it'd be greatly appreciated if you subscribed. Also, if you've liked the video, then give me a thumbs up and also check out our social channels at Follow HomeKit on both Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.